Today we're going to learn the classic melody, Amazing Grace, on the Practice Channel. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. I also teach Skype and online lessons, but more on that later. So, Amazing Grace, it's the tune that got so many people into even wanting to play this instrument, me included. There was an amazing moment in Star Trek II that I saw when I was six years old that, uh, well, kind of transformed my life, and I didn't know it at the time, but, uh, spoiler alert, Spock dies in the movie, and Scotty plays Amazing Grace on the pipes at the end, though, of course, the actor was not playing, but in any case, Amazing Grace was played in the movie, it was fantastic, and it made me want to learn how to play the pipes, and... Uh, I think that was uh, probably the best thing that ever happened to me. So today, it's going to be a little different than the last time we taught a tune, or even my other exercises, because we are not going to be using sheet music. I know that seems a little unusual, but this is a tune you're going to be requested to play more than any other melody. That's been my experience, and I want it kind of in your soul. I want it in your brain. I don't want it to be a JPEG that you're like projecting on your eyes and then following along with. I want it to be something that is inherent and in you. And it's good to learn music in more than one way. Yes, we absolutely need to be able to have the skill to take the written sheet music and turn it into a melody, but it's also good to be able to just hear and learn from somebody else while speaking and hearing and working through that stuff. There's an mp3 of me playing each individual line of this tune, and there's four lines on the practice channel, as well as the entire tune. So you're welcome to download those, listen to those, try to follow along with those. Again, this is about building it in your brain and your ear. This time, we're not looking at any sort of sheet music. So this is assuming you have a number of skills, but if you don't, you're still welcome to do your best to follow along with everything I'm teaching, but this is part of my basic series, and in this, we've already discussed how to separate notes with grace notes, how to change notes with grace notes, how to play D strikes, high A doublings, and a number of other embellishments and uh, bits of technique. So I'll be referring to them by their name, but I'll also be working you through them step by step on this, so you have a chance of learning this if perhaps this is the only tune you wanted to learn on the practice channel. All right, let's not waste any more time. It starts with a G grace note to A and a switch up to D. So to do that G grace note on A, we're going to start with the G grace note in the air. We're going to close our pointer finger down to that low A, and we're going to switch up to D. And when I go to D, I always think about almost like I'm turning a door handle a little bit. I want my hand to kind of pivot. As much as I am lifting the fingers, I'm kind of pivoting my hand down to bring the pinky down, and that helps get this pointer finger out of the way so we don't get a because while that might sound cool, it's not accurate, clean, or what we're looking for. Nice and clean. So work on just that transition a few times until you have it down. Once you do have it down, then we're going to play a D strike, and there's a video up here on how to play the D strike and lots of exercises for that. But again, briefly, the D strike is going to be a G grace note on D, and then in this case, a heavy D strike. We're going to do a low G tap to D. So we're on the D, point your finger up and down, and then we're smacking all three of these fingers up and down in fairly rapid succession. But I do want to hear the D between them. All right, so let's put that together again. G grace note to A, up to a D, and then that D strike, the G grace note and the tap to low G. And that D is going to be nice and long. We're going to kind of float on that D for a good little bit before we do our next change, which is the G grace note to F. And you can learn more on how to do not just the G grace note to F, but a lot of grace note changes with the video that's up here, which is changing notes with grace notes. So check that one out. So for this, we'll be on D, and the nature of this one, we're going to F, but we're also doing it with a G grace note. So if we were to lift everything we needed for F, as well as the G grace note, you'd have, well, this situation right here, and notice I'm balancing this whole thing under my chin for a reason, because, well, you can't hold it with just your thumbs. So this one is a bit of a cheat compared to how I discuss it on a lot of other changes. So from here, we're going to lift the top three. Then we're going to lower the top pointer finger for F, as well as bringing the other three down while lifting our pinky. It looks pretty complicated, but I promise you, do it good, clean, slowly, a number of times, and you'll get it. Uh, 
When you can do it cleanly and slowly with three even tones like that, try to start making that open position a little smaller so we can turn it more into a grace note. That change, again, D, G grace note to F, is worth working out because it's going to happen seven times in the tune. Twice in line one, twice in line two, just once in line three, and then twice in line four. So get that sorted out now. Let's put all of that together. So again, G grace note to A, up to a D, a D strike, G grace note to F. Okay, so now we are going to, from that F, go down to an E and then to a D. And on that E to D, remember, don't have a crossing noise, so we don't want to lower this before these are out of the way. Not what we're looking for there, so make sure these have lifted before the ring finger comes down. So let's put that much together. And there you can hear the rhythm. Ba -dum -da -da, ba -da -da. Remember, we're not looking at music today. I want you to get this in your head. I want to get it in your hands. I want to get it in your brain and body. So now we're on that D. We are going back up again with a G grace note to F. It's the same change we did just a few seconds ago. D, top hand up, switch your hands into an F position. So three up four down and lift the pinky. And if the pinky's a little late coming up right now, that's fine, but we do wanna make sure it does get up and out of the way for that F. And to put that together from the D before that whole kind of walk down thing. And that's actually a lovely little exercise. I would recommend kind of just going on a loop with that D, G, grace, note to F, E, D, G, grace, note to F, E, D, G, grace, note to F, E, D. You can do that over and over and over until that's good, clean, accurate, and has that bum, da, dum, da feel. It's kind of long, short, medium, long, ba, da, dum, da. And then that F, when we do land on it in the melody itself, it's going to be nice and long. So let's start again from the beginning. G grace note to A. We're going to then head up to a D. And again, we want to kind of pivot up to the D. Then do the D strike, which again is ending on a D, which will be nice and long. G grace note to F. E, D, G grace note to another F. And we're going to hold that F for a good little bit. Now, a lot of you are going to say, I don't really hear much of a difference if my bottom hand is up or down. Don't be lazy about it. On the pipes themselves, tuning is critical. You have drones. Everything needs to be really dialed in and sounding great. And I'll tell you right now, while your practice channel might not sound much different if this hand is up or down, it's going to make a big difference on the pipes. So be mindful of your fingers and where they're at. Make sure that when you're on your top hand notes, your bottom hand is in the correct three down pinky up position. So I would work out what we just did several times until it's good, clean, and reliable because that much starts lines one, two, and four. So this is almost half the tune we've already learned by just doing that much. When you can do that for line one, we are gonna do another G grace note to an F. So we're gonna be on a long F and then separate it to yet another F with a G grace note. And then from there, we'll go down to an E. And again, just that little bit. And then to start from the beginning, put that much together. Don't cheat. Don't go online and find some sheet music to follow along. Try to just follow what I'm doing here. Get in your brain. Get in your fingers. I promise you, you're not doing yourself any favors on this tune by looking at it. Moving on. From that E, we're going to do a light D throw. Now, if you have a heavy D throw, go ahead, play your heavy D throw. That's fine. But for this video and for the basic series that we're going through, we're going to be doing the light throw. And again, card up here to 
go through the light D throw, but basically it's pretty easy. From E, we're going to drop down to a low G, raise up to a D, lower to a C, and back up to a D. And that low G, D, C should all be the same length. And then taking you to a D. So now let's do just a few notes before it. We'll do the nice long F, G grace note to F, E, light D throw. One more time. So now let's start from the beginning and go all the way through. So again, G grace note to A, up to D with kind of a pivoting motion, bringing that pinky down, D strike, G grace note to F, E, D, G grace note to F, another G grace note on F, to an E, light D throw. But it doesn't have to be that fast yet. Take your time, play through it, make sure it's good and clean. I say that all the time, but I really do mean it. Playing the pipes sloppy and messy, especially when you get to the big pipes. No one needs to hear badly played bagpipes. We've all heard it. Don't be one of those people. Once you're on the D, you land on at the end of that D throw. You're going to be on that for a good little while. And then we're going to do a G grace note to B. So from there, we're going to kind of lift both the pointer finger and the pinky, everything up that needs to go up, and then lower to a B. So make sure you can get that transition. Then once you're on that B, we're going to do a low G catch to A. Now, some people just call them low G grace notes. That's fine. I like to call them catches. I feel it kind of embodies the feeling of the motion a little bit more. But from B, we're going to lower down to a low G and lift to an A. So if we start on the D that we landed on at the end of that D throw, G grace note to B and low G to A, it sounds like this. And again, and that is the whole of the first line of melody. So we're going to put that all together now. G grace note to A, pivot to D, D strike, G grace note to F, E, D, G grace note to F, another G grace note on F to separate it into two, an E to a light D throw, G grace note to B, low G to A. I would keep playing just that line of music until it is good, clean, reliable, fully memorized, and accurate under your fingers. When you can do that, we're moving on to line two. And line two starts exactly the same as line one, as I mentioned before. It's going to be a G grace note to A, pivot to D, that D strike, G grace note to F, E, D, G grace note to F. All of that is the same. So we only have a few more notes to learn for line two. Once you get to that F, after the bum, ba, dum, cha, you'll do a G grace note to E, go to an F, and do an A doubling, which is going to be a sweep of the thumb on the A once you get to it. So from F, go to a high A, sweep the thumb down. I tend to sweep my thumb up. It doesn't really matter. But again, there's a card on A doublings up there. So if you have some questions or need to do some exercises, go ahead, click that video and figure those out. So I'm going to start from that E that we were going to. So it'll be a G grace note on E, F, high A doubling. Again. You'll stay on that high A for three beats, and you'll sweep your thumb again to separate it into yet another A. So to put line two together verbally and to see it here, G grace note to A, pivot to D, D strike, G grace note to F, E, D, G grace note to F, G grace note to E, F, high A, sweep our thumb, that high A doubling, and we'll sweep it again after three beats.
So that's line two. You only have to learn just a few more notes to build on what we had from line one to play half of the entire melody. Try. So now I'm going to play line one and two together so you can hear them and how it's all coming together. So going into line three, it's very similar to line one, but it starts different. So how does it start? Well, we're coming from the end of line two from a high A. We're going to go down to an F, up to an A, and then we're going to sweep. This sweep's going to be a little bit more delayed than the initial sweep we did in line two. Bum, 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 will be the rhythm. And then we're going to go down to an F after those high A's. And then from there, that's the same as the G grace note to F we did before. There's no G grace note here because we're coming from a high A and you can't play a lifting G grace note between a high A and an F because it's the note in between and we don't want to run down through it. That would just sound messy. So in this case, F, A, A, F. And then from here, it's the same as line one. F, A, A, F, E, D, F, F, E, D, throw, B, G, A. Yeah, it's just that simple. You already know how to play the rest of line three. So if you need help and review on the rest of line three, go back in the video to what I was talking about in line one. There's no need to address it again because it's all the same. I also want to point out that this is a slightly different melody than you might have in your head if you're thinking about the vocal version. The vocal version actually goes That's beyond the scope of this video to go through, but I have had folks ask me, man, that third line just doesn't sound right. What's going on? It sounds great, but it doesn't quite follow the vocal line if you're used to kind of singing it out of like your church hymnal or similar things. So it's more similar to line one. This is just how we do it on the pipes. And there are multiple versions of Amazing Grace. Don't get me wrong. This is how I play it. This does seem to be the most common one, at least in North America, but there are other versions. But this is the one we're going with here today. All right, so I'm going to play now lines one, two, and three. I'm probably going to have to take a breath. We'll see, but let's see how it goes. <laughs> One breath. I would normally breathe between lines two and three, but I want you to hear it with some continuity there. All right, we're almost done, everybody. Line four again starts with the same G grace note to A, D, D strike, G grace note to F, E, D, G grace note to F. And then from that F, we're going to do a G grace note to E, similar to what we did in line two, but now we're going to go down from that E to a D throw. Hold that for three beats and do another D strike and call it a day. And you want to hold that D after the strike for a good long time. And remember in all those D strikes, you want to hear the D between them. It's not a G grace note to a low G. It's not, it's Make sure you hear the D in the middle, and it's pretty short, but it does need to be heard. So that's line four. I'm going to do it one more time. So let's do the whole tune. I am going to have to take a breath between lines two and three. I just don't circular breathe. It's fine, but I do want to have the whole melody captured here on the practice channel for you. Mm-hmm. 
So there is the most popular tune, I would say by far, for the Highland Pipes, at least for the general listening audience. It's one you're gonna have to learn to play. And again, don't go looking for sheet music. Follow this video, do it step by step. I've had dozens and dozens of students learn this tune without sheet music, so I know it's possible to do. Well, there you go, everybody. Amazing Grace. I hope you got something out of this video. And if you did, please think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and again, hitting that bell icon to be notified of new videos. I also teach Skype and online lessons. If you want more personalized instruction, go ahead and head over to www.mattpiper.com or email me at the address you see here, and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet, and I hope to work with you soon. I also have a Patreon where as little as a dollar a month goes a long way to supporting the channel. You can see the link here and it's also in the description below as well as the names of these fine folks that are contributing to the channel. I appreciate you guys more than you know and I'd love to add your name to this list. I also have a line of Command Your Bagpipe merchandise which includes shirts like I'm wearing, uh, coffee mugs, hats, other things. It's great to have some bagpipe merchandise and to show the world that you command your bagpipe. So go ahead, head over there, link you can see here and in the description below. All right, everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and until next time, cheers.